When we needed to mass produce books, we built the printing press. When we needed a way to light our homes, we built light bulbs. And when we needed a portable phone for taking calls, we made the mobile phone. When we needed to complicate our lives more, we made AI gadgets. Now, while that's a bit of an exaggeration, I do think that AI and more specifically AI gadgets and devices are in an interesting place right now. We all see the potential AI has and the impact it will inevitably have on our future. But right now it feels like companies are just throwing a bunch of shit at the wall and hoping something sticks. Just because a company markets something as cutting edge and the next big thing, doesn't mean it is. Maybe in the future, but definitely not in its current state. Throughout history, technology was developed because there was an issue or limitation that needed to be worked out. Humane AI is saying that their pen is a replacement for your phone. That couldn't be further from the truth. The company is claiming that by removing a display and allowing you to speak to the pen, it'll simplify the process of the smartphone experience. But just by looking at the demo, it looked very finicky and it'll still require the same amount of work to carry out the same task. First, you gotta press the button on the pen in order to activate it. And once you do that, you can ask it to carry out a task, but if you need to further interact with it, like changing the song as they displayed in their demo, you have to raise your hand and make these awkward gestures. At that point, you're better off just using your smartphone. It takes the same amount of time to do so, and it's probably less finicky than what they showed in the demo. Or just ask the voice assistant to do it. I mean, Siri sucks, but hopefully it'll be getting improvement. So what's the issue we're trying to fix exactly? What are the smartphone's limitations? So firstly, there's a lot of things a device has to do right if they're trying to replace the smartphone. Starting with be able to communicate, entertain, and have productivity tools for people to use for work or everyday tasks like a calendar, calculator, and you know, the list goes on. On top of having all those things, it must be practical as the smartphone is. Not saying that the smartphone is perfect, but it does a lot of things right or at least good enough. This device doesn't even have a proper screen to consume media, like it just seems to be a bad version of a smartphone. It can pretty much do everything a phone can, but do it worse. The software and AI behind it seems like the most promising thing, but that'll bring you back $24 a month. And on top of that, the starting price of the device is $699 and then you can upgrade as you like. I do wanna get more into the software and AI models that enable these devices to carry out tasks. But first I wanna talk about the Rabbit R1, which is another AI gadget that was announced at CES. Unlike the AI pin, this seems a little bit more promising to me. And they made sure to mention that the R1 isn't a replacement for your phone, but instead a companion. The device is smaller than a smartphone and it has a push to talk button, a microphone, rotational camera, and a scroll wheel. It's supposed to simplify tasks similar to what the Humane AI pin is trying to do. It's trying to remove all the extra steps involved when carrying out actions on your smartphone by just doing it for you. Also, the response time seems to be much faster than other large language models like ChatGPT. Rabbit answers my questions within 500 milliseconds. So it removes steps like clicking into the app, and putting your address and pickup location by simply speaking into the microphone. Also, this is a personal thing, but I wouldn't want to voice out all my actions in public. I'll choose to quietly order an Uber from my phone every time, but that's personally for me. This is something I would find useful if I'm driving or you know, at home and I have my hands full, but the tech behind it is still very cool, which is why I'm buying it. I still wanna see you know, what it's like. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know how others feel about it, but I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments. Back to ordering an Uber, right? Let's say best case scenario, everything works as they presented on stage. You know, everything sounds lovely, right? Yes, and this gadget does look promising and actually useful on like the humane AI pin, but why not just make it into a software compatible with our smartphones? Why do we need a separate device and what's stopping Uber from implementing that into their own app? Voice assistants on smartphones are going to become better and there's already rumors of Siri with AI and Google Assistant, well, it's Google and we know they're all about AI, so it's only a matter of time. And I'll get into that shortly, but first let's talk about why Rabbit didn't just release this as software. I will say though that Rabbit R1's design looks amazing and it was designed by Teenage Engineering, so it looks very cool. But in the end, I'll always choose convenience and. And I'd much rather have this as an app. Like why carry an extra device when your phone can do it all? Again, that's just my opinion. But Jesse, their CEO, explains that releasing this as an app would be relatively easy. But um, 
it'll be maintenance heavy, but he's also suggesting that a large organization like Apple or Google can just reverse engineer their product. But more importantly, he's also saying that they'll always be at the mercy of Google and Apple if they're putting it on their app store. So their workaround was creating their own operating system that they'll put on their device. Rabbit OS is the what they're calling it, and it'll allow them to have more control over the user experience. Now, I'm not sure if releasing this as a standalone product makes it any harder for them to buy them. I mean, Google and Apple to reverse engineer something like this. I'm sure Apple and Google with their infinite resources can create something, some version of this on their own. I'm also not sure how different the experience using an app would be to using their own hardware, but competition is always good. So I'm at least excited about that. Maybe it'll push Apple and Google and other companies really to you know, develop some something similar or better than this. I'm actually rooting for Rabbit and I don't want it to seem like I don't want them or this product to be good. Um, I just don't know how things will turn out for them in the long term, but I placed my order and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it and I'll be covering it on here. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. By the way, as of the making of this video, they're on their third batch of pre-orders. My prediction though, is that it'll be useful for a while for anyone who wants something like this, but eventually these machine learning models will be implemented into Android and iOS and Rabbit will be, and any other company will be forced to evolve or die out. I'm just not sure how the longevity of these things will be. I have some reasons for thinking that, that we'll get into, but if they get an early start, then good for them. If you used any chatbots like ChatGPT, then you've experienced what it's like to use a large language model. Without getting too technical, it's essentially a subset of AI and that can recognize and generate text. So they're very good at understanding and responding to your commands. However, they struggle to kind of carry out actions. So in order to work around this, Rabbit developed a large action model, as they're calling it, which is a type of transformer model. And again, without getting too technical, you give the transformer model an input sequence and it'll give you an output sequence. This large action model they developed allows Rabbit R1 to understand the command and then carry it out. The reason I break this down is because they also mentioned in their keynote that it can learn any interface across all platforms. So it's not like it's limited to their own operating system. This is just what's powering everything. It can carry out tasks across other platforms like you know your desktop on Windows or iOS or Android. So with that being said, there's a lot of rumors circulating that Siri with AI is right around the corner and Samsung recently teased Galaxy AI that will be revealed on January 17th. So you can probably see where I'm going with this. They'll soon develop if they haven't already their own models that can do the same thing or similar or better. Google Assistant with Bard has already been announced. Microsoft is giving its AI assistant Copilot a dedicated dedicated button on Windows 11 PCs. And there's no way that Apple hasn't been working on a much needed Siri update. But yeah, guys, what do y'all think about all the AI gadgets and tech being released? Do you think they'll be around for a while and be actual competition or, for, you know, for these tech giants or, or not? I'm curious on what other people think. This is just my opinion, but um, I'm curious to see what y'all think. So please let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that's all for me. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.